I'm on, I'm on, this is happening. Okay. Yes, they say yes, I'm good, okay. All right, awesome. So I'm super excited to be here. Uh, you saw this morning, I got to show you how you can really leverage everything that you know and love in C Sharp and Visual Studio 2017 to build beautiful iOS, Android, and Windows applications. I'm James Montemagna, I'm a Principal Program Manager here at Microsoft. I've been with Xamarin for a long time, nearly three years before coming over to Microsoft, and I was a developer myself using Xamarin to publish applications for a small start startup out here in Seattle. I simply love it, you can tell, and that's why all these hearts on my shirt are from my Visual Studio and Xamarin Love. Now, a lot of developers ask me, James, how do I get started? And Miguel was here earlier uh, with Keith, and they were talking about these things called workbooks. So I want to show you how I got started nearly six years ago and how I really recommend people get started with Xamarin today. Kind of walk through some of the new features. So let's jump over into my, uh, my PC and Windows 10. So when you go to Xamarin.com, this Developers tab right up top is super important. It's going to show you essentially everything you need to get started. Down here is the getting started, so installing Xamarin, everything you need on your machine. Then there's iOS, Android, and Xamarin Forms. I always tell developers to get started here uh, because that's how I learn. So you go in, iOS, Android, Xamarin Forms, so you kind of learn the basic building blocks of each platform. Now we made it really simple to learn those things and interactively, because I don't like reading documentation unless I have to. So there's these things called Xamarin Workbooks, uh, which are completely free to use. They work on Mac or PC. So everything I'm showing you here on a PC, you can also do on a Mac. And Xamarin Workbooks are ways of interactive learning. They're really, really cool. I love them. I'm going to show you a few of them. So Workbooks, there's like Getting Started. There's Android, so you can learn user interface. There's Interacting with Azure. And you can see in here, we're supporting iOS, Mac, WPF, Android development. Inside here, you can say, what's new in C Sharp 7? I'm going to show you that one. It's so cool. Async await programming. So even if you're just getting started with C Sharp development, these are a great place to start. So I've gone ahead and load up uh, the Xamarin Workbooks. This is, this is the Android app basics, and I have our Android emulator sitting over here. So what's really cool is I can start learning the basic building blocks. So here's getting started. So okay, I can see there's a few namespaces here. And at any time, I can say Control Enter. And what that will do is it'll execute the code, and it's communicating to the Android Workbooks app over here. So it doesn't get too excited for a little bit, but I'm going to go grab my root activity, and then I see I get this kind of rich um, diagnostics back. I can see that this is the root uh, act main activity here. I can learn about defining the user interface. So here I'm going to create this thing called a linear layout, and it's a vertical. I can come over here and add a button to that layout. And so I've added this button. It says click me. I can come up here and set the content view, and then boom, a button appears, and I can click it. Now I could come actually up here and say click me um, because VS 2017 is awesome, right? And then I could come up and I can re-execute. And I can add another button. So I'm just adding multiple buttons in here, right? So now what I can do is I can say, let's add a text view. So here the space is for rent, which is good. I've defined this, this view inside of here. I can update that, that uh, user interface. I'm kind of learning about the properties, how we improve the APIs of Android. I can set the, the horizontal here. I can come in and say, oh, let's go ahead and see the, the padding, for instance. I can say, you know what? I really want that padding to be really big. So I'm kind of learning about the user interface interactively. But I, I'm editing it too. So if I don't like that color yellow, I say, let's do red. And I get rich IntelliSense. It's powered by Roslyn. So I can say, oh, I really want orange red. And this is the Android namespace. So now it turns. And then I can learn about click handlers. So here's my click handlers. I can come in and start, like, here's a button that was clicked. So it updates the user interface. I can learn about displaying toast notifications. Uh, so as I come in here and click it, then we get this clicked pop-up that's inside of here. And what's nice is that each of these workbooks, as you scroll down, they have exercises. So I can learn about how do I increase count and how do I add local variables into this code. So it's a fun way of learning iOS, Android, Windows, Azure, Xamarin Forms all interactively just from an emulator that you install. It's, it's really great. And this is the, the, the workbooks right here. And again, this is free. You just download it, install it on Mac or PC, and you're good to go. Now let me show you what else you can do with it though. Let me go ahead and not save that. I've installed that C Sharp 7 one. So you may be wondering, Mads was up here uh, talking about all the brand new features of C Sharp 7. So what's cool is inside of workbooks, it's gonna lo load up the workbooks, is that I don't even need uh, an iOS or Android simulator. So if I go ahead and just zoom in here, we can see that this is actually in console mode. So I can just write C Sharp code and learn about the new C Sharp 7 features. So if I want to learn about out variables or tuples or pattern matching, I can learn about them here. So check this out. All right, so I have my var input that's here. I can learn about in try parse with the out that's going on. And then uh, this is going to show me the old way versus the, the new way. And at any time, I can just go ahead and click and run. 
and see if things are going to work for me. I can try to try parse different variables, learn about tuples that are going on here. So here's the different tuples uh, that are nice. So kind of I'm learning interactively, even just C Sharp uh, features like what's new in C Sharp 7. I'm going to show one more because I really love it. There's a, a really cool one uh, for uh, this library called Erho Sharp, which is a, a 3D and 2D uh, kind of gaming engine. And this one's really cool. It's a WPF application and also a Mac OS application. So what's nice is that you can also bring in NuGet packages or your own libraries. So this is actually a very short uh, uh, example. So here I'm, I'm literally bringing Erho.dll. This is Erho Sharp, and there's actions and shapes and GUI and, and the 2D and 3D engine. I'm going to come in here and say, let me go ahead and run and, and load this uh, application. So it's going to load it. And it loads an actually WPF uh, output. Now, the nice thing about Erho Sharp is I'm running this on WPF, but it also works on Android and iOS and all the other platforms. So what I can do now is I can add this mutant model. So this is a, a mutant model with a resource and texture mapping on top of it. So I can go ahead and load that into the actual game. So there he is. Right? So I've actually loaded that up, and you can interact with him, which is really cool. So I can come in and I can add um, anti-aliasing. And then down here, it's going to actually look for this data animation. So I have this array. Again, I'm just using C Sharp features. And what's cool is that this mutant actually has all of these different uh, really cool animations associated with it. And it's just an index. So I can come in here and I can actually start modifying some properties that's going on. So as I come in, I can say, oh, this is over a certain amount of time. Uh, I can say, oh, let's, let's check out this, the other animation that's inside here. And I can run it again. Now he updates and he's playing different animations. Uh, we can go four. There we go. And now he updates again. So we're actually seeing these different, you know, different actual animations in real time. So I'm learning interactively with Xamarin Workbooks. And again, this is for uh, Mac and, and PC. It's completely free. You can download it and install it today. Now let's go ahead and jump into a few other things that I was showing off uh, earlier uh, inside of Visual Studio. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about what was given to you in that file new experience. So let me actually go back here. And when I come into uh, Visual Studio 2017, this is going to look very familiar, things that you saw before. So you can load projects from Visual Studio Team Services or GitHub. You have all your projects. And the most important thing is that you have this new project dialog. So I always like to tap on this More Projects option here. And I'm going to walk through this one more time. And the importance here is if I'm just creating a blank Android application, uh, and I want to use uh, Android XML and material design, the support packages, everything rich of creating an Android application all in C Sharp. I would come here and create one of these you know, blank applications or a single view application. Same thing on iOS. What's really important is even if you're creating a Xamarin Forms application, you might want to come in and add an Apple Watch application or an extension. So maybe I need to come in and add an iMessage extension because I'm creating an iMessage application or a share extension or a Today widget when you pull down on iOS. Same thing here, you have iPad, iPhone, and Universal. So these are the Universal iOS applications that have created an iPhone and an iPad application. And of course, you have TVOS. So TVOS and its uh, extensions, if you need to tie into the TV service, for instance, truly anything that you could do in Objective-C, Swift, or Java, you can do right here inside of Visual Studio. Now, under cross-platform, we've really rearranged these templates. So you used to have a whole bunch of different templates inside of here. We really like this brand new dialog box for brand new um, cross-platform apps. And while I showed this morning just Xamarin Forms applications for blank app or master detail app, you can come in and you know you can create a native application that's going to use the Android XML and iOS storyboards and XAML for UWP. You can select how you want to share your code. And even here, you can say host and cloud. So whether you want to do Xamarin Forms or Xamarin Native, you can come in here and start scaffolding out your application. Now, a lot of developers like to start with blank applications. Give me that blank slate. Let me see where, I, where I'm going and where I'm starting from. So that's what I have here in Xamarin Forms. And I, and I want to kind of show you that we've done more than just um, improve the first run experience. We have wanted to ensure that we're improving development as you go. So you can take advantage of all these great features that we've been showing you in Visual Studio 2017, but we can also take advantage of um, some really cool new project templates. So I've created a blank application, a Xamarin Forms application, uh, and I have that up and running right here. It's called App 4. So it literally here has a, a blank application, and it's going to be very similar to what we had earlier, which uh, I have a blank uh, main page.xaml. I have an uh, Android application. Uh, so if I want to come in and actually wanted to write any Android-specific code, I can come in here and do that. So these are all my specific resources associated with that project. 
Uh, I can go ahead and you know, compile it here. I have the same thing on my iOS project. So if I have resources, icons you can see are in here. If I wanted to go and add um, some, something into my app delegate, this is the startup code for my application. And, and since as, even a Xamarin Forms application is a native application, you're able to add rich functionality right inside of, of here. Uh, and of course, there's, and then we have UWP down here too. So if you wanted to come in and even to a Xamarin Forms uh, application for UWP, add some UWP specific controls or light it up with something specific, you can go in here and add that. So any of your favorite toolkits or anything like that. Um, so in there, we have a blank page application. So it just says, welcome to Xamarin Forms. Uh, I could come in and uh, just go ahead and deploy this uh, to my Android emulator. A lot of developers have asked me, like, oh, what Android emulator are you shipping it with? Visual Studio 2017 will ship with some an, um, Google uh, Android emulators, ARM and x86. You can also install the Hyper-V Android emulators, um, so whatever works best on your machine. So here, for instance, I've just spun up a brand new blank page. It says, welcome to Xamarin Forms. That's, that's, that's okay. That's nothing fancy. But let's say I want to get started with something else. So normally what I would do is I would say, I'm going to go into Developers. Uh, I'm going to come down into Xamarin Forms. And I want to show you how rich the documentation is for all of Xamarin. First things first, if I want to get started, I highly recommend this free ebook from Charles Petzold called Creating Mobile Apps with Xamarin Forms. It's amazing. Check that out. You can get it anywhere. And it'll show you like what approach is best for you. And what I love here is that under Xamarin Forms, uh, we can actually go into the getting started, user interface, I like to come in here. And I can say, oh, how do I use animations or colors? Or let's first maybe look at the control reference. And inside of here, I can talk about, well, there's a bunch of different pages and layouts and views, so what are those views? Well, if I come in here, I literally get all of the documentation with source code examples and screenshots of what it looks like on iOS, Android, and Windows uh, across the board. So if I want to say, oh, I need a date picker on my application, I can tap on it, and I can go directly into the API reference, and it'll show me how to actually add the, that date picker in both C-sharp and in XAML. So I could just literally take this source code and slap it right into that XAML that was shown to me earlier. Now we've added a lot of really cool things into the Xamarin Form XAML uh, editing experience. So uh, a lot of developers like to get started with MVVM. Uh, so it's a model view, view model. And I have a, a show here on Channel 9 called The Xamarin Show. So check that out. I do a whole bunch of cool stuff. So you could come in and you could do a bunch of data bindings in here too. So if I wanted to say, I want this to be uh, a binding here. We have this rich, really um, engaging things. If this was text and um, some property, and then I have a converter. So you can actually see as we're expanding these properties, we have a rich XAML editing experience right inside the application. I'll tell this back to Hello VS 2017. It's inside of there. So if I wanted to come in and say, oh, you know what, this need, really needs to be a stack layout, and I want horizontal options to be, or sorry, um, where's my options at? Uh, or orientation, there we go. I'll say uh, vertical, there we go. And I can say padding, for instance, and I'll say 10. And you can see that I'm, I'm literally just kind of editing this experience. And then I could bring up the Xamarin Forms previewer if I wanted to, too. So now I could add a button inside of here and add text. And I'm getting this really you know, nice user interface um, uh, experience of building it right here in XAML. All right, cool. So that's enough of that. And I want to talk about how we optimize and do more, because this is cool. I start building myself. But what if I want real world examples without it going to and from the documentation? So now what you can do is you can come in and say add right here. So under my Xamarin Forms project, I'm going to say add new item. And under cross platform, you're going to see all of these brand new templates that we've added. So not only new project templates, but new item templates too. So I want to add a tabbed page or a brand new content view or a master detail page, I can add that into my application. So maybe I want to add a new list view page. So I'm going to call it list view page one because that's a great name there. We can see what this will do is it will go up, set all of my properties, everything that I need in here. It even sets up the item source, click events, selected events, um, group sorting. It kind of gives me everything I want. Pull to refresh, built right in. It will not only um, set up this list view, but it also sets up um, everything inside the list view, like this item template. So um, what each item will look like. If I wanted to do a custom cell, it gives me the code right here. And then in the footer, I have headers and footers. I can see what's going on. Now, we notice that there's these data bindings. So is busy and key, where did those come from? 
Well, what's happened behind the scenes in this list view page is it's first set up XAML, uh, XAML compilation, so all my XAML will be compiled automatically for really great uh, perf. It's adding the binding context right here to this view model. It's handling some display events, so I get to see how do I use display alerts and pop up a notification. But down here, it scaffolds all of the MVVM framework that I need that's built into Xamarin Form, so I don't need to install anything else if I don't want to. So here I have a list of monkeys uh, that are in here, so baboons and blue monkeys and things like that. It'll show me how to use link and do all this nice querying here and how to do item grouping. It'll do I command. I'm really learning a lot just by putting it in, just creating a blank application so I don't have to go read all this stuff. I'm doing it inside the IDE and I can start taking advantage of all those new fancy C Sharp um, 7 features if I wanted to. So here's this item, here's this detail, here's this grouping. So now what I can do is I can come back over to my app.xaml. I'm going to make this uh, font even bigger just so we can see that. So now what I could do is I could say new, maybe a navigation page, and I'll say new list view page one. There we go. And now I'm just going to go ahead and compile it and run it again over here uh, on my Android emulator. So before we just had that blank uh, welcome to, to Xamarin Forms, we're going to get a brand new um, page. There we go. So I haven't done any other default styling. I could change the default colors that are in uh, on here, but we can see that I added a navigation page, so I could do navigation if I wanted to. Whenever I tap on one, I get a pop-up display alert. Again, all this code is added for me automatically. Boom. It's really, really nice. I'm learning how to do grouping, learning how to do headers and footers and custom controls. I didn't write any code. A lot of your applications may just be lists of data. Let's do one more. I'm going to come in and let's add uh, another new item. I'm going to add a tabbed page. I have a lot of tabs in my application, so I'll say my tabs. There we go. I'll add that there. Now, this is really cool because XAML is really highly extensible. So we can see that I'm actually bringing in a custom namespace uh, of app4 in my assembly, which is app4 because it's a great name for a project. And we can see I'm actually doing two things. First, I'm actually adding pages uh, inline right here. Uh, or sorry, uh, by reference. So this thing says that there is a my tabs tab one, but then I'm going to go ahead and add tab two and three and four. So if we look what this has done for me over on the right hand side is we actually have my tabs. If I go ahead and open this up again, we're compiling up the XAML. It's a tapped page. If I come into my my tabs one, we can see that I have a little stack layout and a red box that's inside of here, and it's going to show me how to add a little bit of code. And then, of course, in the code behind, there's just, you know, compiling that XAML so everything is compiled up. So now if I want to, let me go ahead and exit out of that, I can come up and go back into my main page. I can say I want to see my tabs, run it again. There we go. Now, again, this will compile up nice and quick, redeploy onto my Android emulator. Boom. And now at this point, I have brand new tabs, so tab one, tab two, tab three, and I can click through and I get that nice material tabs. Now what's amazing there is that I haven't even written any code. It's literally just done for me, and I can start modifying these user interfaces there, uh, which is really cool. So that's step one. Now I've only been showing Android, so I can come in here and I can say, uh, set my UWP application as my startup. I always like to go into my configuration manager and make sure everything is, is set up properly. We can see here I've changed it into x86 mode. So let me make sure that my UWP project is being built and compiled. So now I can go ahead and start that up. It's going to compile my UWP application. It's going to run it here locally on my desktop. Uh, it could also uh, be run uh, on a, a phone emulator, it could be on an Xbox, it could kind of be anywhere to be honest with you. I get this nice splash screen with the Xamagon uh, logo. And what we're going to see here is that we get a UWP application with the three tabs. So what Xamarin Forms is doing, and this is really important, so remember if I go ahead and you know, scaffold this up, we can see it automatically re reacts to my user interface. Um, let me go ahead and pull up that app for again. Now, when I said tabs, Xamarin Forms is an abstraction of common controls. And this is because Xamarin Forms is powered by the Xamarin platform. So if I want to go create a, a rich Android with really high fidelity user interface and UWP, I can do it all with Xamarin because I get access to 100% of the APIs and the controls. Xamarin Forms abstracts it in this high level. So when I say that I want to label, this is a text, a text box. And this over here is a, a, a text view for Android. It lays down the native controls. So it has that fully extensible 
um, user interface across the different platforms, which is really, really nice. Now let's go ahead and show it one more time and how I would get this over onto uh, iOS. So again, we have an iOS project. And I'll show you the setup here and how Xamarin uh, Forms knows how to load those projects. We go into our app delegate. We can see that uh, over here. This is inheriting from a, a Xamarin Forms application delegate. This loads up our app that's going to be inside of there. I should be able now to come in and set the iOS project as my startup. Uh, and when you have Xamarin installed with Visual Studio, you're going to see that you can either deploy to an iPhone or an iPhone simulator. And that iPhone will be plugged in physically into your Mac. Now, uh, everything I showed kind of even this morning, you can see that I have on stage, I have this MacBook, this beautiful rose gold MacBook that's over here. And you can see I'm actually connected here just via my IP address. That allows me to do things like bring up the designer, use the Xamarin Forms previewer, but also use that remote iOS simulator that's there. So what's really cool now is I can come in and um, compile up my iOS application here. This is going to do and compile my C Sharp locally uh, on my machine. And then what we'll do is it'll do a remote deploy to that remote iOS simulator and show up on Windows. And that's part of Visual Studio Enterprise. Else it would just open a simulator on my uh, Mac, which is nice. So this will go out and compile it up, blah, blah, blah. Now at this point, uh, you can have different, you know, a whole bunch of different uh, simulators for iOS installed over on your Macs and Mac inside of Xcode. Um, and I have a few. Let me show you what I have up here. So I have uh, iOS 10, iOS 8, and I have a whole bunch of them. I, I do a lot of development and I push to the App Store all the time, so I have to have all these different emulators installed. And I'm just going to go ahead and deploy it here on the iPhone 5S. Uh, over here, and this is just a really small MacBook. Now, this Mac doesn't have to be literally sitting next to me. It could be a Mac Mini, or you could be leveraging some other services like Mac in Cloud, for instance. Uh, and what this is doing is it's going out and, and just with that IP address, it's going out, starting that remote iOS simulator. And what I love about it is if you're on a touch screen, you get touch screen controls at the same time. So you get um, the ability to do all of that there. So now it's going to launch this application. We get the nice splash screen. And uh, again, what I'm going to do is pull these all three, um, these two side by side, is that we can see here that I get the iOS look and feel with tabs on the bottom over here in the different pages. Now, I don't have any icons, so I'd probably want to go add icons. I can add icons for iOS, uh, Android, and Windows if I want to. And just by default, the blank one here just has tab one, tab two, tab three. But we're getting that nice look and feel of each platform that's over here. So I can come in. And this remote iOS simulator gives you a whole bunch of great native uh, controls. You can take screenshots. You can mock your location. You can use Touch ID that's inside of there. Now, I want to talk about one, uh, one more feature that I didn't get to show this morning, which is often in development, I may be coming in and doing a lot of, um, a lot of development and make sure that I get really good performance. Uh, and another one of those features uh, of VS Enterprise is the ability to come in and analyze and use the Xamarin Profiler. So right here under Analyze, you're going to see Xamarin uh, Profile. And I've set the Android project as my startup again. So when I do that, it'll actually go out and actually redeploy my uh, Android application and brings up our Xamarin Profiler. This has things like allocations, cycles, memory usage. I'm just going to say instrument everything. So just go ahead and hit OK. There we go. Now I love, I love the, new, the new Profiler. This is going out. And what this is going to help me do is it allows me to take snapshots. So if I want to see what happens when I go from tab to tab, am I releasing memory, am I increasing memory back and forth? I can take a, a snapshot. I can come down into uh, my call tree. So I can come in and actually see my call tree in real time, how many bytes are being used, what is being allocated. I'm getting my managed and unmanaged stacks that are inside of there. I can come in uh, back to my allocations. Let's go ahead and pause it and stop it here. I can detect cycles. I can see my, my CPU time. But I can say, oh, I can spending a lot of time on strings. What method is allocating those strings? So I can come in and see um, and, and look at the actual caller, my allocations um, inside of here. So what is actually being used? Uh, and as you kind of get down into it and you use a lot of, a lot of the code, you're going to start really using the profiler to see, am I releasing uh, images? Am I doing things like that? And you can kind of move around inside of here and see uh, how your applications are performing. This works great uh, on both Mac and PC. So everything I'm showing you here also works on the Mac with the Xamarin Profiler. So you can do iOS, uh, Android um, profiling right there, which is really awesome. 
So a few other things while I wrap up and kind of talk a little bit more about that project that I showed earlier, that one that was connected to Azure. So when I do File, New Project, and I bring up that cross-platform app, to really get a good sense of what a full-baked application looks like under that master detail, you can say Host in Azure. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring you into, uh, where to go? They're my items that I had open that I showed off this morning. Now, I only got to show a subset of all the features, so I just wanted to walk through and let you know what you're going to be experiencing. So we have a full ASP.NET application with Azure mobile apps. You can come in and use connected services to easily deploy and add additional services to it, like application insights. You have all of your controllers for your item controller. So here I have my master detail controller. I can get these items. I can patch items, insert items. And what we've done at the same time is allowed you to come in, and we have these helpers. So implementing observable collections in cross-platform settings. Under services, you're going to see things like your Azure data store. You can come in and say, oh, do I want to use authentication? What type of authentication do I want to use? Facebook, Twitter, Azure AD? This is going to now allow you to come in with a few flags, enable and disable user authentication. Get a login screen for your application. But you can also see how easy it is to do data synchronization. So for instance, when I want to synchronize with my Azure backend to do online offline data synchronization, all I have to do is use first the cross-platform connectivity plugin to say, am I connected to the internet? If so, pull down all that latest data async, and then I can synchronize it here and push it up to Azure. So I can do that online offline data synchronization. So we have all these services in here to not only do authentication, but Azure AD. It also shows you how to do um, the authentication. So how do you light up and use the built-in dependency service in Xamarin Forms? Again, you can use this both with Xamarin Forms and Xamarin Native, whether you want to build out the cross-platform user interface or get that high-fidelity user interface with Xamarin Forms. The same exact application, you'll see both ways. You can kind of go through that template and see what works best for you as you're deploying these backend services. Awesome. Do we have any questions? Are we, are we going live, Seth? How's it looking? We have some questions. Hit me. Do, do you want to, we want to take them now? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Let's do it. By the way, uh, somebody, if you're looking at our shirts, <laughs> we are homeboys, him and I. And so it, his, you have hearts, though, I do. right? You want to, let's, let's get it. Let's, for the people. Let's, for let the people, in. so everyone right, can so see. Zoom in real close on yeah, this. Yeah, th this right. this, these are not the same zoom shirt. Zoom in real close. Get in here. Get, get in here. Get, get in here. Get in here. One right. is a, a leaf. Leaf. And the other is a heart, heart. so FYI. Yeah. So, okay. We are adorable. Okay, yes. cool. All right, so here's some questions for you. Uh, James, we'll start with Enrico. Can I use a list view with one observable collection with and without grouping just by changing is grouping enabled? Yeah, absolutely. Um, check this out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rock your socks off right here. So if we go back into Visual Studio, remember I had that list view page right here? I could literally just say, uh, is grouping enabled? False. Now the difference here is instead of saying items grouped, I'm going to say items inside of here. Now what I have here is two lists of data. So I have an observable collection of items. Then I also have an observable collection of grouped items. So all I'm doing is essentially is how do I want to display my information? Do I want it grouped or do I want it not grouped? It's up to you, and we show you how to do that in that default template. You don't have to just modify the XAML, and you're good to go. Fantastic. Here is another one from Travis. I think it's more of a statement. Mm. Xamarin Workbooks, what a cool way to get your feet wet on app development. What did you think about it when you first saw it, James? You know, I... I'm not a huge fan of reading. <laughs> I like reading, but you know, reading through documentation and doing this stuff. When I first got started with Xamarin, we had these things called recipes, which I had to go and I had to download the source code and I had to go execute and open an IDE and do all this work. What amazed me about workbooks is like I just went to this file. Like, check this out. If you go here into this page, I'm going to go to developer.xamarin.com. This is what I want to show you how crazy this is. I go to workbooks. So zoom in on my PC real quick. When I come to workbooks, how you get down, how you get started is, oh, I want to learn about Azure for WPF. Click it, it downloads the file. Oh, that's and awesome. That's it. So it, it'll, it'll even tell you, like, it'll say, oh, just download it to my desktop. I open that up and boom, it opens up everything. And it'll even tell you in this little pop-up, do you love it? Did you have a problem? This will go directly back to the team immediately. So of course I loved it. That was great. And obviously the Answered logo is on point because that's, on, yeah. that's a very lovely logo. In fact, Danae says, can we create our own workbooks? They are awesome, by the way. Yes, absolutely. Check this out. 
So uh, I'm going to come in. Let me let me show you this. I like doing this interactive stuff, right? Let's do it. So I'm going to come in and I just go and say workbooks. There we go. Xamarin workbooks. Now what this will does, it'll say what kind of new workbook do you want? Do I want a uh, council, WPF, iOS, or Android? If I just create a new council one, it brings up this workbook. It'll connect to my namespace and I can say var um, test equals two plus two and I hit enter um, and it executes. What's nice is that you're noticing that it's code, it's code here, but at the same time I can add this little documentation. I can say, hey, this is documentation and it's just marked down inside of here. Now I can come and say save as. This is the best workbook of how to add stuff and I'll add it to my desktop. There we go. Now what I could do is, I'll show you what this looks like. I could reopen it, or if I come down here to Untitled, I'll say Open With, and I'll just kind of hack around this here. I'll say Open It with Notepad. It's actually just Markdown. It has a little bit of mark, uh, a little bit of special schema to say, is it platform? Are there any nougats inside of there? But literally, it's just Markdown. Looks like so YAML at the top too. Yeah, there's like a little like YAML-y type setup in, uh, in there. So I can say this is an Android app, or it uses these nougats. But literally inside of here, you just start writing Markdown, and boom, you can just you can distribute these. And if you open one up from the internet to make sure your security, it'll pop up as, hey, you download this from the internet, make sure that it came from a valid source. So I always say go get started on this, but this is a great way if you're creating your own libraries to document them interactively. All right, here's another question from uh, Dan Barrett. Can VS 2017 and Xamarin handle Samsung Gear 3 Tizen or via other SDK for VS? I want to hook up IoT with Gear Alerts for fun projects. That is a great question. Um, I haven't worked around or played around too much with the Tizen uh, tooling for Visual Studio, but when you actually, I would just, you know, Bing or Google, you know, Tizen SDK for Visual Studio, you download everything, you add another project, a Tizen project to your Xamarin Forms project and add in that code. Um, and what, we, sh what uh, we showed at Connect when we, we, we were talking about the Tizen was the TV, there is watch support. So if your watch is, uh, your gear watch is running Tizen, you should be able to. Um, I haven't, again, messed around, but they just came out with a new update to it too, and they added tons of great APIs. So definitely check it out. All right, here's a, a bunch of questions from this gentleman, Clad. Can we create a custom control and inbuilt validation for Xamarin control references? Absolutely. I mean, uh, what's nice about if you're building things in the, the traditional, na the native Xamarin, you're going to go through the same routes that you would go through with Android or iOS, but all in C Sharp, so you can create custom controls, anything you want. Even with Xamarin Forms, you can do that as well. It, can, it does uh, behaviors, triggers, um, converters, everything that you kind of know and love from XAML is all there. So uh, almost just about everything that you could do in XAML, you can do in Xamarin Form XAML. The only thing it doesn't have right now is like the X-bind type stuff. It just uses that traditional binding, which I've always been a fan of uh, inside of there. But yeah, you can totally do that. And we have great examples of doing behaviors. That's what you would look like, uh, look to get started with essentially. So just last question, and this is for me, there's a couple of other ones, but what's your call to action? What should people go and do right now First thing that would make them successful with Xamarin right now. Yes, go to, well first install Visual Studio, check that Xamarin checkbox. Um, go to Xamarin.com, like I said earlier. When you go to the top, tap on developers. This is gonna give you everything you want. Right here, sign up for Xamarin University. I think if you sign up for the next week, you get 60 days live interactive training. There's also self-guided. This is another great way of self-learning Xamarin workbooks. Do one, two, three. If you're on a PC, maybe get started with Android. That's the easiest way. If you're on a Mac, get started with iOS and Android. And then try out Xamarin Forms. Go through these little things. When you go through Android, Hello Android, you're learning like the, the quick start. What, am I, what do I have to do to build a very simple application and get into that native goodness that we expose? I did that six years ago, Seth, when I got started. And I've now published over 70 apps across all the different I app use stores. some of his apps, people, to play games. The yep. game app is on point. Yes. By the way, coming up next, we have Modern Web Development in Visual Studio 2017. Please ask your questions using hashtag VS2017. We will answer them live uh, for the folks there. They, they have about 25 minutes of presentation time. We leave the last five minutes for your questions. If there's a lot, I may intrude earlier. Uh, but we're going to take just a small break, and then we're going to get started on Modern Web Development in Visual Studio 2017. We'll see you in a little bit.